to perform in the especially if you notice that little tilt thing that's there. That's one of the best corrections to over time. The tilt thing doesn't go away right away, but it's one of the best corrections over time to any of that tilt thing. They can be tilt thing or any twist thing that they get used to the length of their box as a little bit just of an avoidance of I have a little stiffness somewhere. I don't want to stretch fully through that stiffness, so I'm going to hold that part of my body tight. I'll get it somewhere else so that's a little bit easier and let that easier part do the work of the part that doesn't want to get. Does that make sense? Take a little break for some transitions, right? So the best is with that, I never think, you know, when they're tilting or twisting, I never really go up on that wild goose chase and try to find it. Because sometimes the more you go, the more you try to analyze it and overanalyze it and overanalyze it, looking for it, they just get more and more and more twisted. We tend to end up then, because we're worried about it, we take emphasis on something else to go in search of that. And then the overall trot or the quality of the gate or just then or just tie with something else is going to kind of go down. So the best thing for it is just to take a within the work, keep the challenge high as far as what he does behind, so that the flow of energy in here and that stays high. Because if that flow of energy from the hind leg can back off the hand, that's a huge part of where they can, like I said, kind of back travel out of the bending or out of the connection that's needed to really make the bending beneficial. So they can slow down as if we're already in trouble keeping, so we want to keep that energy and that activity in the hind leg really high. And then as we feel it, we're kind of twist or he's hiding a little bit from something, just search that. Bend an extra, bend the flex. Counter bend in one center, bend a little extra in it again. And just here. say to him, I'm going to continue within this. This is for him. Within this, I'm going to pass out to the shoulder or whatever I'm in. I kind of work it through this arrangement. These are stasis. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So that through the movement kind of of his body. Can you get the spectrum. power cord? Well, no, but it will. I can't film and get this hooked up. Keep 
challenging the action to be no slowing down those right to stay on a screen. Good. Right. So that you really want to be feeling, and I would use it a little bit as a gate. When I get to the end of, let's like, say, that last lunch, and then I get on the short side, is he trotting bigger, looser, more active? Does he feel more soft, more supple, more malleable than when I started that lunch? And I look at it so he doesn't feel like he's moving bigger, better, softer at the end, challenging even a little stronger. Now, like that front, now that's getting better. Like there, the float starts to kick in a little bit more. From that push from behind, you got it. Yeah. Nice. On this case, with a super, super. Just a little less than that. So you kind of make a few little mental markers, performance where you go, that trot, I just have on the short side, let's say that, you kind of get plugged in mentally where you go, that's not my new minimum. So any less than that, I'm going to start to correct pretty strong. Telling us that he's got to kind of hold himself up to that end of the bar. Right? Even a little more trying to stop. Quite the good. And that's that feel like a new challenge. Challenge then, a little more, a little less. Track right again, one more the same with that. Huh? As you challenge the time legs with the activities, you're saying, I'm not going to let the trot get bigger per se, but I'm going to challenge your hind legs to trot quick to do more output, more energy, more power in the air. As you challenge those hind legs to speed up, they start to tuck under. As they tuck under, you kind of think it's literally like saying you played in the back. So as these hind legs tuck under, the back starts to lift, that's where that float of the trot starts to come in. So as you start to feel that float of the trot, almost as funny, almost sometimes it feels like they start to slow down. Not slowing down, slowing down, but he's hesitating in the air because he's starting to get more time in the air. But that is from the hind leg like actually quickening and speeding up. Right? So if you feel that, that is the rhythm in that way, it starts to slow, which is good. Then you start to get that close. Stay on the stick for one long time straight again. Mild shoulder in again. Stay on the case with that activity behind you. Keep capitalizing on that. Yeah. Building up. You got it. So now you really look at the quality of the work, let's say within the shoulder and your half back. If you can do the angle and you can do the bend, right? You can only get, let's say, the angle of the bend is only going to be a certain percentage of the score, right? So any horse really can do the angle and do the bend. What makes the, the score higher than just five or six for getting the, the movement mechanics done is the quality of the game that they do the movement in. Does that make sense? So the balance of the game, the uphill of it, and just the quality of it. So what you're thinking and what you should be challenging for now, that's again, like I said, just getting where the quality is in. So what you're challenging for is can I get it into a shoulder and or arm spin or a half spin, regardless of the angle of the bend, and you feel like, one, I don't lose any trot, it doesn't slow down, it doesn't back off, it doesn't get flatter, and two, I could actually make it better as I'm going. And again, they're all a little different. In this case right now, that measurement is just the activity, that speed that you need to be trotting out behind, which is gonna like overall start to give a more inflated, and floating off the ground and feeling the trot. Yeah, nice. That's good. The challenge, you've got it. You've got it. It's good. Try to walk again. Like the right way better than to the right. Thank you. 
And then they take you up, and then they raise the hand to you again, and then go back to the right, bump you up another notch. If that's good right away, walk right again, then I'm going to pick you up and go back to the left. And then the same one will work back to the left again. And you, like I said, kind of stair-stepping it.